just, you know, speak a, a little bit more to that, just from a, yeah. from a concept standpoint for someone who may, may come into the business and, and, and what that could potentially mean for someone over the course of their career. Absolutely. And I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, what might be intimidating or discouraging some of us from getting into the space. And I think if we just have more conversations like this around what are truly your opportunities, you don't have to be a generational insurance agency. You know, you can come in, you can make your money and sell it and go do something else and create another generational company. Right. So I think that from again, from a conceptual level, I think that, you know, coming in, and knowing that, you know, part of the opportunity there for you is building an established agency, knowing that what you can one day sell and knowing that there's people out here that are willing to buy. I mean, I'm a part of some groups on Facebook. There was a sale done in the common thread. It was a gentleman um, that had he'd been in this agency, I think, for all of three months, but he had became an elected official in his in his municipality and according to their laws and regulations he had to give up his agency for conflict of interest so he had he put in his, his numbers he showed his numbers and said yeah this is what this is what i've done so far and um, i'm looking to get out of it people were, were lighting them up so um again there's an opportunity there and just knowing that that is something that you can pursue you know it's again it's just a matter of how you set it up Again, certain lines are more attractive than others because of the, the money that's going to be in it for whoever's coming to buy it. But there's there are people that are willing and agents that are willing to buy you up. It's just a matter of do you have a healthy enough book for them to do it? So it is something that's not a far fetched idea and it happens pretty often. Yeah. People talk about, you know, you know, there's a you know, hey, I'm going to be a, I want to be a boss and I want to build it big. I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> This is an opportunity to lay that foundation in a very, very significant and, and, and just massive, massive way. That's that, that's so, so important. So, you know, kind of coming in now, you know, how, how has it been, you know, you've been running your business, uh, you, you came from the corporation, you've been running your business, you know, about four years, doing it well. What, what, what do you find is the difference between being on that corporate side and being you know, independent and, and, and running your own show outside of, you know, everything just being, you know, on you and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big part. Um, <laughs> I, I'd say the biggest thing for me uh, was there's two things that were important to me. And I realized very quickly that uh, work out from the independent side and to make it very hard to see myself going back um, to the corporate side of things. Uh one is is the marketing freedom, um, you know, little thing in prior um, positions, you know, it baffled me that I would have to get something approved through the marketing before I could go out to do a booth or something like that. Like, why do I why do I need to do that? Um, and also there's certain there's so much there's, a you know, and I get it to protecting their brand um, and I'm probably trying to avoid an E&O claim. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, but, ours and omissions for those. Who right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, li liability, you know, um, <laughs> we, don't we all have it, but we don't know. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I understand it from the business perspective, but as, as somebody who's looking to go generate and create, um, and, and I like to think I have a very creative marketing mind. I don't like the, the restrictions on that. So that, that was one thing. Um, the, the, the other big piece I would say that, that on the independent side that I really like, um, of course, is the ability to really stretch and grow however I like. Like if I, you know, I didn't start off with full service. I actually started off as just a life um, guy. And I said I was going to be a specialist. Through trial and error, I realized that uh, there was a lot more, actually through COVID really is, is what did it. Um, I was kind of put in a position where I had to make a pivot. And then looking at my niche, when I really, again, slowing down to speed up, when COVID hit and I realized that, you know, I was going to have to make some critical decisions if I was going to stay open or not, um, I had to look at my options and I said, okay, well, if this is your audience that you want to get to, um, and this is where you want to be inevitably, what are you doing to put yourself in position? Um, 
because at the time, and I'm, I keep going back, but prior to COVID, I was just a life, um, life agency. And I really always wanted to speak to millennials, give them from my prior experiences, but I was always still spending a lot of time with final expense or working with a lot of seniors. So I was saying I wanted to do this, but I was still pursuing that. COVID happened and it sat me down. And I said, okay, well, it's now or never. If you want to get to your audience, how are you going to do that? And are you in the best position possible to speak to them? And so that's when I was able to make that pivot for myself. And I picked up my PNC license again. And from there, the rest is history. And it's been very, um, been very steady and its growth has been great ever since. So that was a great decision. But going back to my initial point, the ability to make that type of pivot and make that type of decision, I, I'm able to do because I'm in, I am independent. On the corporate side, that, that wouldn't have happened. Um, I think those would probably be the two biggest things. Yeah, no, that, that is huge. I mean, being able to, one, you know, kind of control your own messaging, right? Because yeah. you kind of control over your brand. Um, I think that's that's huge. And and, and then having the, the the flexibility, you know, to make those pivots when the environment changes. I I, I definitely get that because in, in COVID, I was actually in an environment where I was writing for a company that wasn't equipped to deal with that shift at, at all. Mm. Um, it disrupted the entire infrastructure of the company, you know? <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah. so, so, so that's a, that, that's a huge point, you know, that, that you make Calvin, um, you know, at this, at, at this point, you know, with, with, with your agency and, and, and continuing to build it, um, what, what's keeping, what's, What's keeping you motivated? Like, what 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 keeps you going? What what's what's fueling what's fueling you right now? Not done, man. Um, you know, my sets my sights are set pretty high. I, you know, I think uh, there's still a lot more in front of me that I want to achieve. Uh, is some of them that I'll be willing to share would be, you know, I, I definitely see a new financial being a household name within the black community, and I'm going after it hard. You know, I'm not being apologetic about who I'm trying to help and, and how I'm trying to help them. Um, and I think that, you know, that has, it was a little, uh, I don't say nerve wracking at first, but I, I knew that I was a little hesitant because I didn't know how that was going to be received. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know, you know, if it was going to be profitable for me, you know, just being honest. So, uh, but, you know, going through that, it has definitely been both. It's been profitable and it's been well received. So um, still being, I have not, I'm not a household name yet in the black community. So until I get there, I still have a lot of work to do. And then I do have some even larger goals that I think um, is, is ironic because, you know, um, and Ghazi, she talked about it, you know, uh, a black carrier. I, I would still love to, to be involved in that in some way, shape or form. So a lot still left out there for me. And, and yeah, with all that in front of me, there's no reason to slow down now. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah, because you, 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 you 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 rev you revving up right now, you know. Yeah. You revving it up and, and doing and doing quite well, you know, in, in that process. Um, so, so you know, kind of going going back to, you know, the the life and the PNC switch and dealing with the millennial demographic, right? Because there's there's two things there's two two things I want to touch on here. The, the first is how do you how do you approach, not how do you approach, millennials? Let, let's just talk about the millennial demographic and, and life insurance. Because because property casualty, okay, we, we know. And, and on some chart, I guess I'm a millennial too, but, but I'm talking about the, the other, the other millennial. <laughs> property casualty, hey, okay, they're going to have auto insurance. They're going to have, yes, they're going to have homeowners to buy a house. Life insurance, millennials, T talk to me, brother. What's what's up, Ooh, man? That and that's and that's why I was scared to dive into it. I was that's why I was toe tipping, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> to get to get over to the millennial side, just because I wasn't sure on how to approach it. You know, the urgency isn't necessarily there. It's it's not. Um, in most cases, it's not. Uh, so for millennials, uh, the the biggest thing that I that I found that was that helped me have success in this market 
uh, was one, I don't even really talk about death benefit a ton. You know, when I do my initial consultation, it does come up because we've got to figure out your number of how much coverage to get you. But I don't talk about it a ton. I figure out the number, but I'm focused. I focus on living benefits. I focus on cash value. I talk about private banking, which is hot right now. It yeah. is hot. I'm actually doing a, um, a an exclusive private banking call where I'm, you know, walking you through private banking one on one. Because that's, I think that's a lot of information there that that's valuable that we need to get the message out. But awesome. thing, you know, focusing in on those things has made the conversation completely different. Because we're not talking about when you die, because you think you're never going to die. So let's not even talk. Okay, cool. Since you're going to live here forever, let's talk about this cash value real quick. Since you since you um, are in business for yourself because you don't want to work for nobody, cool. I I understand that. I respect that. So how about putting, uh, how about growing something that's going to allow you to tap into capital for your business down the road? Okay. Well, you don't have the 401k plan because you don't understand it at work. Okay. Well, how about we talk about some supplemental retirement options? So we started talking about those types of conversations and now I've got your ear. Before when I was talking about, oh, well, if you, if you pass, when you pass, you know, 40, 50, 60 years from now, they, that wasn't catching it. So shifting the conversation to those type of conversations and what life insurance does now and today and in the near future has been very positive. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wanted you, I was waiting for you to say that. I knew that's what you were going to say. Because, you know, <laughs> the conversation of, of like financial literacy, financial education, like that's it's a hot topic right now. Yeah. It's something that, that everyone, you know, it, you see it on social media and there is, you know, I, I actually I did a little post about it because I was like, you know, there's a lot of sound bites. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of sound bites and yeah. the, the the thing i wanted to to ask you because i knew we had this conversation coming up was look with those sound bites people get excited about it right yeah how can i how can i have my own bank you know i'm you know i'm trying to you know get the i'm trying to get a get a you you well i don't yeah. even know they know the term iul I, they might not know the term iul i don't know you know when you talk to them, they may not know you know whole life and, and all that good jazz but I'm trying to, you know, create do infinite banking, right? And that's the yeah. one of the big ones, right? 